So I hope you uh, missed the uh, live stream this weekend. <laughs> uh, I did a live stream this weekend with uh, Dave Zaritsky and Calvin Dyson and Tom Sears. Uh, very, very cool. Great to hang out. Uh, but unfortunately, we had a couple technical uh, difficulties, which I still can't figure out why it was happening. There was like a massive echo. Uh, so anyway, so this segued over into a Zoom meeting, which was a lot of fun, by the way, a lot of fun. And I think we'll do more of these in the future. In fact, this might be uh, kind of the new format. Uh, hard to say. Uh, look at me. I'm, I'm Paul Lynn from the Hollywood Squares. But uh, one of the things that I did share in the Zoom meeting was the fact that I had taken this little uh, survey, this kind of ranking of the Bond films, and it was pretty interesting. Now, Scott and I have reviewed almost all of the films by now, uh, and as you probably already know, I have kept a list of my rankings. Uh, I, I went through all the films before we started. I ranked them and scored them from one to 10 because I wanted to make sure that my, um, you know, that my ranking system was consistent and that I didn't have a lot of contradictions. So I, I spent a lot of time making this list up and, and again, sorting it uh, the way I think represents my accurate feelings about the films. Uh, in comparison to each other. Uh, then comes along this little app that, that was kind of going around, this little fun little thing on Facebook where you just sit there and kind of go through and pick the films that you like better. And from your choices, it ranks the films for you. Now, this was interesting. And I, I took this and I, I tried very hard to shut my brain off. You know, don't think about it too, too hard. Just kind of pick, like, what am I in the mood for? If I literally had to pick if these are my two choices, I could pick one film to watch right now. Which one would I choose? Um, so, yeah, this was sort of like a pure, unfiltered uh, thought process. And uh, then when I got my results, it was like I said, there was a couple surprises you might like. So let's let's look and see how they played out. OK, so again, these are the rankings that I have had basically uh, set up for a long time. These are my personal rankings that I took a lot of time, thought and care into sorting out and scoring. Uh, on the right, these are the results from the the app, the sorting app. Uh, here again, here here was my off the cuff thoughts. Uh, again, trying to shut off my brain and just pick and choose what I what I felt like watching. Uh, so yeah, here's a couple surprises. Well, let's let's start out with. The ones that stayed the same. Now, not so surprisingly, my top two, Casino Royale on Her Majesty's Secret Service, they stayed right where they where they are. My bottom two, Die Another Day and Diamonds Are Forever, uh, they stayed firmly on the bottom. Uh, not a real surprise there. Uh, the other ones that stayed the same, uh, For Your Eyes Only, stayed in the same spot. Thunderball, also in the same spot. Dr. No. Stayed right where it was. Tomorrow Never Dies also didn't budge. And poor old Spectre still hung around down at the bottom in the same place. Uh, so what about the other ones? Which ones uh, moved around a little bit? What, what were the winners and losers? Well, uh, let's end off on a positive note. So let's talk about the losers. Octopussy went down one. Uh, surprised me a little bit. Uh, but again, only one spot, and I wasn't really uh, disappointed with what took its place. Skyfall went down one. Another bit of, little bit of a surprise, because I, I definitely like Skyfall. Uh, you Only Live Twice, yeah, not a surprise. I think I've only always been pretty lukewarm on this one. Quantum went down one, okay, no surprise there. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me went down two, a little bit of a surprise, but it, you know that film didn't resonate with me as much as it does with many people. Live and Let Die went down too. Okay, not too surprising. License to Kill. You know, people thought, <laughs> I mean, people already think that I'm pretty hard on this film, uh, but I guess it just goes to show. I, I kind of, I never really feel much of an urge to watch that one. It's just, it's just so bland. Uh, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, the Man with the Golden Gun went down three spots. Uh, and here, wow, here was the big loser. And boy, some people will lose their minds over this one. Goldfinger went down six places. I, I was pretty surprised by this. Um, again, I, I, I've always sort of acknowledged that Goldfinger doesn't really do as much for me as it does for a lot of people, but uh, wow. Uh, yeah, so I guess I didn't, I guess I don't really have, even though I can kind of respect it for what it is, uh, I never really get this, uh, this craving to watch it too often. So yeah, a um, little bit of a surprise. 
Uh, but what about the winners? Uh, for every loser, there has to be a winner, right? Uh, so what went up? The Living Daylights came up and uh, bumped Octopussy down one. Uh, I've always been a Living Daylights fan, big fan, so I'm not totally surprised with that. From Russia with Love went up one spot. Again, I've kind of rediscovered that one, so I'm not too shocked. The World is Not Enough also went up one. Again, I kind of feel I feel like it's the most watchable of the, the Brosnans. GoldenEye also went up one. But uh, boy, the next two, these are <laughs> these are the big surprises for me. A View to a Kill went up seven places. It went up in the ranks, seven spots. Holy cow. I know Peter Brooker and Mark O'Connell are going to be very happy to hear that. Uh, yeah, listen, you know, I, I've always sort of said it's kind of a, it falls under the, the category of a guilty pleasure. I guess I enjoy watching that one a lot more than I will admit to sometimes. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Seven places it went up. Uh, but that still wasn't even the biggest winner. Holy cow. Look at this one. Moonraker up eight spots. Wow. I mean, that that surprised me. Now, again, I like I said, I, I sat there and I just kind of mindlessly. Ch OK, if I had to watch one right now, which one would I put in? Uh, Moonraker's got a lot of fun. Uh, it's uh, this. The opening stunt is great. I can watch it any time. I love the music. The locations are stellar. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the bottom line is some of these that, again, are kind of silly, uh, but they're fun and have a lot of rewatchability. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the takeaway from this is, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, even though I can sort of marvel at a film for being great, having a great story, having twists and turns. Uh, but I guess over time, when it comes to just raw rewatchability, sometimes the silly ones uh, can be the most fun. So props to A View to a Kill and Moonraker for really showing up high on the list. Good for you guys. So there you go. What does it all mean? Well, I think what it means is that the conversations, uh, the ongoing conversation is never ending. Uh, as we grow, as we evolve, as we uh, are, as our moods fluctuate, uh, what we may or may not be looking for in a Bond film can change at any moment. Um, and there's something to be said for, you know, one of a uh, uh, fellow that watches my videos, you know, reached out after doing my Connery ranking. And he said, you know, there is a difference between the, the, fil the films that you consider the best ones and the ones that you enjoy. And I totally agree with that. And I think when I was trying to do my original rankings, I was trying to sort of, you know, factor both. Um, I judge each film according to how much they, they resonate with me personally and how much I can, I can safely say, yes, empirically, this is a well done, well structured film. Uh, but yeah, sometimes the, you know, the mood just hits you a little differently. And, uh, and again, our, our opinions are going to evolve, uh, as, as time goes on. So anyway, I think my, again, my original rankings, I'm still pretty comfortable with it. Um, but this was a lot of fun. This, this was fun. And I think again, uh, just seeing how many of these kind of guilty pleasures shot up pretty far. Yeah, it's, again, it's kind of interesting. So uh, anyway, listen, again, this is uh, fodder to keep us entertained during the quarantine. I hope you found this reasonably interesting. I will be back in a couple of days with uh, my rank with our Scott and I, our review of Quantum of Solace. Uh, again, we were going to have this out much sooner, but we had other things going on to fill space. So here you go. And, and I'm going to pull in Scott to do a uh, to do a live stream so you can talk to him. And uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, so I will see you very soon. Keep watching Being James Bond. I'll keep cranking out content for you. As always, keep living like Bond. Stay safe in this quarantine. This is your good buddy, Head of Section, Joe Darlington. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.